Hi, hello, hi. So, uh, you may notice something slightly different. I'm actually wearing a new cologne today, so, uh, <laughs> it's funny because I'm not joking. I was legit, like, about to film and I was like, I should put cologne on. And I was like, nobody could smell you from their house, so that was pointless. But I could smell me, and I just want you to know that I smell really good right now. So anyway, I moved. Welcome to my new apartment. <laughs> um, background is still under construction. Lighting, sound is all kind of... We're experimenting, we're on this journey together, you and I, so. So today's topic is about age. Um, I know it seems like a bit of a weird topic, but it's just age relative to a lot of things, like transition, going to school, starting a new job, all that stuff. It's just, I feel like a lot of people have anxiety about age, and it's not just because I turned 25 this year and had a quarter-life crisis. I don't know what would make you think that. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Before we get into today's topic, I want to let you all know that today's video is actually sponsored. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Pride Counseling. I'm going to tell you more about them later on in this video, but I'm just really excited about this because I actually use Pride Counseling and it's been really great for me. But anyway, we'll get into that and how it ties into the topic later. In a nutshell, Pride Counseling is an online private counseling service for the LGBT community, and they match you with fully licensed counselors. There's a lot of good stuff about that. I'll just, I'll get into it later on in the video, but just to let you know, we have a really cool sponsor today. So yeah, I wanted to talk about age. I recently got accepted into university into my first choice program. Thank you, thank you, it's really exciting. And I'm gonna be starting university in the fall. I've been in school prior to this. I've been in college slash CJEP, which isn't the same thing as university here. It's kind of like an in-between between high school and university. I don't really know how to explain it, but anyway. Almost everyone else I know who's my age has already graduated from university, and I was starting to feel really sad and just feel like maybe I couldn't go to university. Like, I had to hold off on going to university because I transitioned and I used all my money for that, so I had to work full-time to save up for top surgery and stuff, and I had to move out. It's a complicated story, and I just, I couldn't afford to go to school. And now, now I'm going back to school, and I'm going to be my way through school through commissions and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna find a way. Anyway, point being, I'm in university now. And I just really, for the longest time, felt like I was just lagging behind. And even with my driver's license, for example, I'm 25 and I only got my driver's license like about two years ago. Until I got my license, I just thought, I was like, I'm never gonna get my license at this point. It's like everyone else I knew had started driving school when they were 17 and they had their license by the time they were like 18 and I didn't have that. And I just ended up falling behind. But until I got my license, I was just like, man, I'm so old and I can't drive yet. And now I'm like, I don't notice a difference. Like now that I got my license, it's not like I feel that same, like, oh no, I'm so old and so behind. And and it's kind of the same with university. Like now that I got into university, I'm, I'm going to be going. I don't feel that sort of like, oh, I'm too old to be doing this, oh no. And again, it was the same with my transition. Like I was worried that I was too old to transition until I actually started transitioning. So I felt like this a lot. It always, in the moment, seems to feel like it's too late. For you or at least it did that way for me it always felt like it's too late so i can't do it like don't bother just do something else like i would give up a lot because i thought that i was just late and i thought that being late to something meant that you were disqualified basically i thought it was too late for me to go to school because i'm 25 i thought it was too late for me to get my license because i was 23 i thought it was too late for me to transition because i was 20. but i've realized like that's just so that's just not it and it's such a horrible way to think because, at least for me, it meant that I was letting go of a lot of my dreams. Like, I'm not going to take up karate. Listen, don't laugh at me, but like, I'm not gonna do karate because everyone else who did karate has been doing it since they were like three years old. And like, I'm in my mid twenties, I can't start karate now, but it's like, man, do karate if that's what you wanna do. If that makes you happy, do karate. You could learn new things. You could take up new hobbies. It doesn't matter if everyone else and their mother and their mother's dog has been doing it from the minute the sperm hit the egg. It doesn't matter. It's never too late for you to follow your dreams and do what you want to do with your life. You could be like 40 and already in your field and realize like, hey, I hate this job. I want to do another job. I have to go to school for that. If finances permit, I understand that it's a huge privilege to have access to education. 
But if you can, and the only thing holding you back is your fear and feeling like it's too late for you, forget that. Just do it. Go to school, do karate. <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to let you know that it has been liberating for me. I've worked through this in therapy, and this is why Pride Counseling is sponsoring this video. It's something that I worked through with my counselor, and I realized how much of an impact it was making on my life. There are a lot of really great things out there that you might stop yourself from doing, and they could be really big things like going to school or changing job or transitioning or getting your license, or they could be smaller things like dancing. If you go to a bar and a song you like is playing, just allowing yourself to dance, creating art, taking a painting class, doing karate. Those are all things that like, they're just fun. You get what I'm saying? And it's this mixture of like, if I haven't gotten good at that thing up until this point in my life, then I'm probably not going to get good at it, so I shouldn't pursue it. And like, there's so much there. It's like, first of all, pursuing something shouldn't just be about whether or not you think you'll be good at it or you'll be the best at it or any of that. Like, I think that you should just dance because it's fun. But then there's that other added layer of like, nobody's too old to live their life. And it's your life. Like, who are you? Like, is there someone at your door every day who's like checking your ID to make sure that like you meet the age qualifications to do the things that make you happy? No. So I don't understand how I got in that space in my head, you know? Through my therapy, what I've realized is some of it comes from my very deep fear of failure and inadequacy that I just carry around with me all the time. That's why I have EDS, my back pain. It actually comes from carrying the weight of all of my baggage. But also, it comes from comparing yourself to others. And it's hard to not compare yourself to others. I, it's, I think it's a normal thing to do, but sometimes it could get really unhealthy because you feel like, well, if they've accomplished all of that and I haven't accomplished even a fraction of that, I'm never going to catch up. But it's like, one, you might be able to catch up, like literally who knows, like life is wild and does all kinds of stuff. But two, it's not about catching up because it's not a race. You don't, you don't need to catch up. You're not, like life isn't linear. A friend of mine, Ash, posted this thing on Instagram the other day talking about just this, where they were like, life only seems linear in retrospect, but at the time that it's happening, it's not. It's not a straight path. So you can't, compare yourself to others as if you're on this racetrack that's going one way when really it's more spherical, you know? Life, life, it, life is a sphere. I started talking to my counselor about this stuff because I started to feel anxious about like not only school, but like some things relevant to my transition that I won't get into specifically in this video, but that anxiety of like, what if it's just taking me too long to do things? What if I go to university and it doesn't take me four years? What if it takes me six years? It's like, what if it takes me 10 years? What if it takes me all this time? It's like, okay, so what? Even if things take me longer, even if it takes you all that time to get to where you want to be, you're still going to get there. And there's no shame in taking things at the pace that you need them to be at. I just wanted to talk to you all a bit about that because I'm excited about going to university. I'm scared about going to university, but I'm working through it and I'm identifying those fears. I'm identifying what it is about university that I'm afraid of because it's not that I'm afraid of failing, it's that I qualify failing differently. Failing for me in my head wasn't about just like, I can't pass my classes. It was about like, what if I can't handle more than one class a semester? It's going to take me forever. But it's like, so then it takes you longer. Like it's, it's fine. Going slowly and taking things at the pace that you need is not synonymous with failing. You're not failing. I didn't realize how much that applies to things. It, it applies to my channel. Like just this whole thing of like, what if what I'm doing isn't good enough, but it is whatever you're doing is enough. I've said that before. It's the phrase, whatever you do today, let that be enough. It really resonates with me. And I always tend to forget how many things that applies to. It applies to feeling like, oh, maybe it's too late for me to transition. Maybe it's too late for me to get my license. Maybe it's too late for me to go to school. It's not too late. The pace that you're going at is fast enough. It's okay to take things slowly. Going slowly doesn't mean that you're not getting anywhere. It just means that you're respecting your own boundaries. If ever you feel frustrated because, you know, it's taking longer for you to get where you want in your transition and stuff like that, it's just remember that you will get to the same end point. You'll get to where you want to be and time isn't running out. Your life follows your own timeline. Anyway, I just, I hope that made sense. Hopefully it maybe resonates with 
someone else out there, whether it be about your transition or school or learning karate. Um, again, this is stuff that I worked out with my counselor, who happens to work for the sponsor of this video, <laughs> Pride Counseling. No, for real, I tried online counseling uh, because of a lot of reasons, but I wanted to let you all know how it went, and so now I'm really excited that they're sponsoring the video. So Pride Counseling, I think, is really great for the queer community, great for disabled folk. It's accessible um, in that you don't have to leave your house. There are many different ways you could communicate with your therapist. It doesn't have to be face-to-face -face or over the phone. You could write it over text, which is great for me because I like to have time to read things and process them and then respond. Um, and I communicate most clearly written because as I'm speaking, I forget where I started, which is a problem in every single video. <laughs> I've been able to work through some of my day-to-day -day struggles that I was having a lot more trouble identifying because it's just, it's a different type of therapy. You could go the traditional route and like video call and stuff like that if you want to be face-to-face, -face, that's totally up to you. But just for me, the whole like texting thing, I'm like, oh, this is nice, I like this. In terms of cost, um, I looked into it and Pride Counseling is on a sliding scale, so they do offer lower prices for their counseling. Um, I'm gonna walk you through actually how to sign up for Pride Counseling and how to sign up for their financial aid because they offer that at the end of the sign up process. So if you're looking to try therapy for the first time or if you're looking to try online therapy for the first time, if you're doing this sign up process and you don't wanna do it alone, then stick around for the rest of this video and we can sign up together. There's gonna be a link in my description. If you wanna follow that link, that would be super cool because you'd be supporting me and the channel and all that cool stuff, but it's totally up to you, so. You know. So if it's your first time signing up for therapy and it's scary, or it's your first time signing up for online therapy, or you're just someone who deals with executive dysfunction, like me, I'm going to walk you through the full sign-up process and the process of applying for financial aid, because I feel like maybe it'll be less intimidating if we do it together. You don't have to enter your payment details right away, so if you just want to go through the sign-up process so you have your account, and it's ready for when you're ready, then you could still go through the sign up process now and decide if you wanna do it and if you want to enter your payment details later. So if you click the link in my description, it'll bring you to this page here. Uh, how do you identify? So I'm going to put transgender female to male. What are your pronouns? Mine are he, him. What is your orientation? Select all that apply. Asexual, queer, Pansexual? How old are you? I am 25. What is your relationship status? I am in a relationship. Have you ever been to counseling or therapy before? Yes, I have. How would you rate your current physical health? I have EDS, so I'm not, I'm just not trying to be dramatic or anything, it's just... How would you rate your current sleeping habits? Uh, no, they're, 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 they're not, they're not great. How would you rate your current eating habits? Mm, they're also not great, but I mean I just moved so I think it's like normal. Anyway, uh, how would you rate your current financial status? Also not great. Are you currently experiencing overwhelming sadness, grief, or depression? I am not. Uh, over the past two weeks, how often have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Little interest or pleasure in doing things. I'm gonna put like several days? Over the past two weeks, how often have you felt- have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Moving? or speaking so slowly that other people could have noticed, or the opposite, being so fidgety and restless that you have been moving around a lot more than usual. Nearly every day, but again, it's because I just moved, so I have a lot of anxiety. Uh, over the past two weeks, how often have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Feeling down, depressed, or hopeless? No, I would say feeling anxious more than depressed. So trouble falling asleep, staying awake, or sleeping too much? Oh my god, uh... <sighs> nearly every day or more than half the days? Uh, more than half the days. Feeling tired or having little energy? More than half the days. Poor appetite or overeating? More than half the days. Feeling bad about yourself or that you are a failure or have let yourself or your family down? Why are you coming for me like this in front of my salad and all my followers and all of their salads? Okay, I'm kidding, I'm joking, it's a joke. Um, yeah, a lot. I'm working on it. I just, there are a lot of times where I feel like I'm failing. Trouble concentrating on things such as reading the newspaper or watching television more than half the days. Thoughts that you would be better off dead or hurting yourself in some way. All right, well, trigger warning for that. Sorry, I didn't, uh, it's not like I have these questions memorized, but... How difficult have these problems made it for you to do your work, take care of things at home, or get along with other people? Very difficult. 
Are you currently experiencing anxiety, panic attacks, or have phobias? Absolutely. <laughs> Are you currently experiencing any chronic pain? Yes, as we speak, in fact. Are you currently employed? Does YouTube count? I don't know. Do you consider yourself to be spiritual or religious? No. Are you currently taking any medication? Yes. When was the last time you had a plan for suicide? How often do you drink alcohol? Never or infrequently? How comfortable are you with your identity? Very comfortable. How much of your LGBT identity is contributing to your mental health concerns? Do you prefer to be matched with a counselor in the LGBT community? Who referred you to Pride Counseling? <laughs> it was YouTube. I, well, I mean, in your case, it was YouTube. In my case, it was just Google. Um, I am in Canada. Preferred language is English. Yeah, I completed the questionnaire, heck yeah. And then create your private account. So, um, it'd have to be a spare email, so I'm gonna do my art email. No, I don't, what, what is this? But who could remember this? No, I don't want that. I agree to the terms and conditions. Oh, I want you to guess whose phone was up inside of them just now. It was mine. So here you get to choose you prefer a male counselor, a female counselor, a counselor who provides Christian-based counseling, an older counselor, a non-religious counselor, or a counselor of color. Okay, so here you get to put what you want to work on with your therapist. Um, let's say depression, somewhat important. Stress and anxiety, most important. Coping with addictions, less important. Relationship issues, less important. Family conflicts, trauma and abuse, yep. Coping with grief and loss. Intimacy related issues, eating disorders, somewhat motivation, self esteem, and confidence, anger management, career difficulties, bipolar disorder, coping with life changes, executive and professional coaching. Yeah, yeah, actually, I guess like executive functions, compassion fatigue, or concentration, memory, focus, ADHD. That there it is. Uh, here, so specify why you'd like counseling. You have to put an answer here, but like I've already signed, like I've had an account for a while. <laughs> so I don't know what to put here if I'm not actively signing up. Um, just trying it out. So this is what happens next. A licensed counselor will be, with the proper qualifications, will be matched to you. Your counselor will review the information you shared. You and your counselor start communicating online. The counseling process begins. What if I don't like the counselor that is matched to me? You can ask to be matched with a different counselor. Pride Counseling has over a thousand counselors with different qualifications and areas of expertise. I like that you're able to change counselor if you don't like the one that you're matched with. Um, I think that that's really important because usually you have to like, if you're paying for therapy the traditional way, you're paying like, 100 to 200 dollars per hour and like it takes a couple of tries to know if you're good with your therapist and it's like you don't want to spend like 600 dollars to find out that you don't match well with someone whereas here one i don't have to tell like i don't we don't have to have that awkward breakup i could just like swipe and change counselor uh but also like you don't waste all that money um so now this is what i want to show you so if you if you can't afford it it's 65 dollars per week charged monthly you click i can't afford therapy and then you could check your eligibility and then you fill all this out. So your current employment status, if you're employed, uh, hourly, student, what is your current employment status of your spouse? If you don't have a spouse, you just put I don't have one. How much do you and your spouse combined earn from working on a monthly basis? Please include gross wages, salary income from business trips, etc. How many children do you have who receive more than half of their support from you? Enter zero if none. How many dependents other than your children or spouse live with you and receive more than half of their support from you? Enter zero if none. So if you can't afford it, they do offer financial aid, which I think is super cool. So that's it. I just wanted to walk you through that in case you wanted to sign up, but it was intimidating. I have trouble sometimes, like sometimes just getting someone else to dial the number to call a place. Like I don't mind speaking to like the secretary once I get in touch at like my doctor's office, but I just, it's the act of executing that's really tough. So just, I thought maybe walking through it together might help for anyone who's a little intimidated to sign up, but wanted to try it. Anyway, cool, if you're still here, hi, hello. Thanks, thanks for sticking around. Uh, you, you look lovely today. Um, I hope you're doing well. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to Pride Counseling for sponsoring this video. It means a lot to me to be backed by something that's helped me so much personally. So yeah, that's super cool. Anyway, I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks.